so I, I've told this joke before, um, but it bears, especially in light of Second uh, Peter, you know, this man was talking to God, and in his turmoil, he said to God, he says, Lord, I, I heard that in our time, uh, or, or in your time, a second is but a million years in our time. And, and God answers back, and he says, you're correct. And he says, so then, I guess logically that means that a, uh, a penny to you is, is a million dollars to us. And God says back, that's correct. So the guy pauses for a little bit, and he thinks, and he goes, hey, uh, Lord, do you got a penny? And God answers back, give me a sec. <laughs> is this thing on? Tough crowd, tough crowd. Um, a lot of times how we go through life, it's the least person that we expect makes the largest impact in our lives. Or if we look at historical significances, sometimes it's the littlest person that we expect, or the least person that we expect, makes the largest amount of impact in our lives. In our generation, just thinking back on September 11th, you know, the huge tragedy, here were nine terrorists who were insignificant, yet how they have changed our lives is unbelievable. Those of you that fly in an aircraft, you understand how the least of a person has made such an impact in our lives. Or think about how when you had, you became grandparents, how that least child has changed the way you look at life. How you look at life. Or Ryder, how he has changed your life on how you look at life. Each of us has had some way or somehow that the least expected has done the most important. This is in reflection with today's readings. Look at John the Baptist. He starts out two Gospels with John the Baptist. John's Gospel and Mark's Gospel. They don't have the story of the camels, the sheep, Mary, the... the, the, the the whole nativity. They start off with John. John the Baptist. Of the one who's crying out in the middle of the night. We learn that John isn't exactly the prophet the world was expecting though, don't we? A good number had listened and heard his words. We read this morning in Mark's gospel that some had repented, confessed, and changed their lives around. Now, John was very different. He walked around eating bugs, eating honey, and he wore clothes of camel's hair. Now, I don't know if, if it was me or you, but you can, if you've ever been around a camel, you understand that that was not the uh, cashmere of Jesus' time. Uh, that was itchy. It's mentioned why in Scripture? Because it's important. It's important. Scripture is the only book you'll ever read that is not filled with fluff. If you read a Daniel Steele novel, she has to add all kinds of fluff in there to get you to the end. Scripture is not like that. Why is it in Scripture? Because it is important. It says that he's different from the mold on what the world had expected. He was different. And that's why it's in there. John wasn't, I mean, if John was here today, he wouldn't last at any church, Anglican church, more than five minutes. He wouldn't. As their presbyter, as their priest, he wouldn't last. I know in my last life, he wouldn't last 10 seconds. Why? God forbid that your priest came into work wearing anything other than the, pli the priestly clothing. I mean, would people think of someone so worried about what the Lord wants to hear rather than how a priest is supposed to look or act or say? I remember a good friend of mine who was at seminary with us, and he, he had come back to talk to us about how he had walked away from a parish that he was at for 10 years. 10 years he was at that church. And as soon as he left, the first thing that the 
the vestry did when they do, you know, they write up that parish profile. They said their next priest they get wants somebody who preaches a little less Jesus. John the Baptist wouldn't last. Peekaboo. In my last life, and sort of now in my new life, a lot of the bishops, a lot of the clergy, a lot of the parishes want the clergy to be in this mold. I mean, a priest riding a motorcycle? Who ever heard of that? True. You see what I'm saying? We all have a certain bias in our heads that we say if somebody is a priest or somebody is a deacon or somebody does this, they can't do the following things. Every one of us at one point or another in our lives like to be told, we don't like to be told, but we have been told, repent and make your path straight for the Lord. And I fought that for years until that aha moment that hit me when the Lord pulled me aside. I remember that day when I heard the voice of John the Baptist and it came from, of all people, and if you ever listen to him, he's great. His name is Pastor Tony Evans. He's on the radio. If you, his books are phenomenal, especially his writings about John. His writings about the Gospel of John are just paramount. And I heard the word repent, and not on the side of the River Jordan, but of all places, on the side of the reflection pool at Washington, D.C. <coughs> Now, I know the joke that they said that, you know, up at D.C. this year, they've, they've stopped doing the nativity scene because they can't find three wise men, and they're definitely still looking for a virgin. You know, I heard that whole joke type idea that nothing good comes out of D.C. But I'll tell you that for me, that place has meant so much to me that I've changed ever since. I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to accept Jesus Christ on the side of that of that reflection pool at DC. I was up there for that million man Christian march. Do you remember that old group of promise keepers that came out? It was an all men's Christian group. And I had gone up there with with really some powerful Christian men. One of them was Bishop John Rogers, who was part of the, the consecrators for me on on Veterans Day when I became a deacon in the church years ago. And then there was his son, who's now, is he a lieutenant commander? He's, he's, he's a chaplain in the Navy. He was so inspired by me being in the military that he went into the Navy and became a chaplain. And now he's always being stationed with the Marines. He used to be down here with the Navy, with the aircraft, and he says, no, I like how the Marines take care of me. So he's always stationed with the Marines. But these two men were on both of my sides. As Tony Evans preached this sermon about repentance, and to look at myself. And the same goes to you. Repent. Make your path straight for the Lord. And it was at that time that I came to know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. To accept him as my King of King and Lord of Lords. And my life has never been the same since. And you can ask Mary. When I came back from that Million Man Christian March in, in Washington, D.C., I was a different husband. I was a different Marine. I was a different man. I was now saved by the blood of Christ. Now, I had the inclination since I was a child for where I was called, but this was that defining aha moment that happened in my life. A God who loves me enough to die for me so I could face the Lord God with, with my vain attempt to be a great Christian, but rather the failings are hidden by that blood of Calvary. That's what Tony Evans preached about. What a great man. Because I know that as when I was baptized, I died with Jesus. And I am his in his death now. But I am marked and set apart by him. I am part of the body of Christ. But then again, so are each and every one of you. You were baptized. You are part of the body of Christ. You are in him. We are all in him. And he is uh, in us. So when God talks to our Lord at his baptism, says, you are my son, my beloved. In you I am well pleased. 
the Lord is talking to you at the same time. Now this week I look forward to reading my email to see how many people want to say, hey, listen, you need to uh, uh, keep up the videos. And usually I, I receive these really nice emails on YouTube uh, from people that look at our videos and watch them, you know, because I post them on, on YouTube. And I'll always get little comments down there. And it's always on this Sunday that people seem to comment the most. Because they, every person out there, and I don't care what generation they're in, they need to realize that God loves them. And that's why I forward this to Facebook and everybody, I like this and it goes off here. And I mean, we get millions of hits sometimes on some of these videos because everybody out there doesn't always hear that God loves them. We need to be that voice. I just think that this Sunday, as we celebrate Advent 2, look at your lives. Who is that unexpected person in your life, or maybe that unexpected person is going to come into your life, that you need to listen and pay heed to, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees did when John came. He changed their lives. They had to relook at the way they prayed. How do we know that? Because it says it in Scripture. Many repented and changed their ways. Maybe it's that person that you're going to appear to today. You may appear as that unexpected person in their lives and allow them to change. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, who at the baptism of John at, in, or Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized in his name may keep this covenant they made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior forever, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, glory everlasting. Amen.